Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we have the right equations for the two loops, all the voltage rises and voltage drops around each of the two loops, we're now ready to find the currents. And again, what we've done is we've taken our two KVL equations and placed them into a matrix format. And we can use determinants to solve that matrix. So first we need to find the D determinant. So D is equal to, and we go ahead and just copy what's in here. Notice I use parentheses to kind of make sure we have the elements clearly defined. So here we have the 5 plus J2. Here we have minus J3. Over here, plus J3. And minus J2. It just makes it a little bit cleaner to work with. All right. First, we need to multiply these two elements right here. And so we have 5 times a minus J2, that's a minus J10. And we have a, a J2 times a J2, that is a negative 4. But with the negative here, it becomes a positive 4, right? J times J is negative, times a negative is positive, so we have plus 4. Now we subtract the product of these two. Well, first of all, we subtract, and there's a negative sign that makes it positive, but then J times J gives you a negative again, so that would be a negative 9. And if we simplify that, we have negative 5 and minus J10. Okay, now we find the D1 determinant, which means we take the first column and replace it with this. So we have 100 with a phase angle of 60 degrees. We have 0, that always makes it nice when we have a 0, and then we still have the second column, we have the minus J3, can put parentheses around it and a minus j2 like this notice this product here becomes zero we only have to worry about these two right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rewrite it like this so this becomes 100 with a phase angle of 60 degrees this is still a minus j3 this is a zero instead of writing a minus j2 i could write this as a two with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees and then it becomes easier to go ahead and multiply those two together. So 2 times 100 gives us 200. And um, then we have 60 plus or minus 90. Since I'm uh, multiplying, then that gives me a minus 30 degree phase angle here. All right. And what I could do is I could go ahead and already change this one as well. So we have 125, take the square root of that, that's 11.18. So this becomes a minus 11.18 because I have the negative signs for both of these. And then for the phase angle, since I pulled out the negative sign and placed it here, I get a plus 5 and a plus 10 here. So it would be a 10 divided by 5, which is 2. Take the inverse tangent of that and I get 63.435 degrees. 63.435. 4, 3, 5 degrees. Sometimes it's hard to figure out where to put the significant decimal place, but add a few extras and you can always simplify it later. We still need D2. So D2 is equal to, now we keep the first column, 5 plus J2 and a J3. And the second column is replaced by this. So we have a 100 times a phase angle of 60 degrees and we have a zero here now I'm going to change this instead of writing a J3 that makes it a little easier so instead of J3 I can write this as 3 with a phase angle of 90 degrees all right that makes it easier to multiply and this is equal to well this product of course is zero now this product I subtract this product that becomes a minus 300 with a phase angle of 60 plus 90, which is 150 degrees. Okay, you could also write it, you can take this negative and put it in here and add 180 degrees or subtract 180 degrees, so this could be written as 300 with a phase angle of minus 30 degrees. By subtracting 180 degrees, this becomes minus 30, that gets rid of the negative sign, so we can do that as well. All right, now I'm ready to find the currents. I1 is equal to D1 over D, D1 was 200 
with a phase angle of minus 30 degrees divided by D which is a minus 11.18 with a phase angle of 63 I'll just cut off a of one decimal place 0.4 degrees there we go that's a little bit cleaner all right what's that equal to so we have 200 divided by 11.18 negative so it gives us um, let's write it here that's equal to negative 17.9 with a phase angle of minus 30 minus 63.4 that would be minus 93.4 degrees uh, let's see here did I forget my minus I certainly did there we go can't forget the minus uh, but now I can add 180 degrees to this and get rid of this negative sign so this becomes equal to 17.9 with a phase angle of 93.4 negative plus 180 86.6 that's good 86.6 degrees and that gives us I1 all right so that's a, a nice form of I1 right there okay now we go ahead and find I2 and I2 is going to be equal to D2 over D and D2 where did it go right there 300 with a phase angle of minus 30 degrees divided by same denominator minus one uh, minus 11.18 with a phase angle of 63.4 degrees and it looks like let's see here 300 divided by 11.18 that's a minus 26.8 minus 26.8 with a phase angle of minus 30 minus 63.4 that's minus 93.4 but again to get rid of the negative I'm all, I add 180 degrees I get 26.8 with a phase angle of add 108 to that that would be 86.6 degrees is that the same phase angle it certainly is same phase angle for both Currents I1 and I2, so this one is 17.9, of course, if you want units in there, that will be amps. Just a different amplitude, but same phase angle. And that is how you find the two currents once you have the two equations correct. Again, getting those two equations correct is paramount. Once you have them, the rest is fairly mechanical. Of course, still easy to make a little mistake here and there. Forget a negative sign like I did. Good thing I caught it. But uh, that's how it's done. That's how you find the currents when you have mutual coupling. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they're correct. 17.89. Yep. And 26.8. 86.6. Yep. 86.6. Good enough. Good.